Hello, this is chapter four, video number five. Uh, in this video, we are going to be talking about how to calculate residuals. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and read through this problem. We're gonna kind of piece it apart um, to figure out what we can make of it. Uh, and then we're gonna talk about what is a residual and how do we calculate it. So Joe sells used cars. He records the age of each car along with the number of miles it has been driven. The following equation was used creating um, was created using his data that predicts distance of uh, distance from the age of the car. All right, so we are predicting distance from the age of a car. So if I plug in how old is the car, how many years old is it, we should figure out what the distance is. Now, real quick, uh, these are used cars. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and calculate, or just for practice, figure out what does this y-intercept mean and what does the slope mean. Um, so kind of a side question. So our y-intercepts. So a car that is zero years old, so I would assume that it is the same year as made. It's not new, it's still used. So this is just a model that came out, let's say in 2020, um, somebody drove it for a little bit and then returned it again in 2020. So a car that is zero years old is still expected to have 6,875 miles on it. Awesome. All right, now slope. Our slope is 11,250, so this would be for every year a car is driven, uh, the mileage is expected to increase by 11,250 miles. All right, so that was kind of a side question, um, identifying what is the y-intercept, what is the slope. So let's go ahead and go on to the question that I originally was going to ask. Let's calculate the residual for a car that is two years old and has been driven 31,250 miles. So here is what a residual is. A residual is a comparison of the expected value and the actual value. And here's how we are going to calculate this. The residual of something is the actual value minus the expected value. All right, so this one, we already have one of these values ready to go. We already have the actual value of the car, the actual number of miles it has been driven. In this case, the actual amount of miles is 31,250 miles. Awesome. All right, now we want to subtract the expected value. And the expected value is something that I'm going to need to calculate. I want to figure out how many miles would a car be expected to have if it is two years old. Well, to do that, let's go ahead and plug in two into our beautiful equation here. I'm going to go ahead and delete this to give myself a little bit more space. All right, so if I were to type in, or if I were to substitute in two, predicted of two, 6,000, or 6,875 plus 11,250 times two. And if I were to multiply that all together, times two plus 6875, um, this car is expected to have 29,375 miles. All right, so if my residual, my expected value, I'm supposed to be, uh, this car should have 29,375. And finally, if I subtract these two values, if I subtract these two values, um, 375, um, I end up with 1,875 miles. So what the heck did we just do? What did we do? All right, so let's go ahead and backtrack real quick here. So the residual of something is your actual value minus your expected value, your actual value minus your expected. This car actually had 32,000 or uh, 31,250, but it was only expected to have 29,375. So that means that this car had more miles than anticipated. This car had more miles than anticipated. And I'm gonna go ahead and look at this graphically for you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and look at this graphically. So if I were to pull up, Oh, not you. If I were to pull up, I went ahead and graphed that linear regression line. Um, and the car that we just talked about had two years and 31,250 miles. All right. And this kind of explains that where that 1,000 came from. It was only anticipated 
to have right around 29,375. However, it was above what it was expected to have. Now, if this were to have a negative residual, well, let's think about what a negative residual would mean. It is possible to be negative. That means that the car has been driven less than it was expected. So real quick recap, we need two values, the actual value, the expected value. Actual value is what it actually happened. Expected is using our formula. And then finally, when you subtract those, you either get a positive value, meaning it's been driven more than expected, or a negative value, meaning that it has been driven less than expected.